Today is the life group lesson for Sunday, uh, May 23rd. The title of the lesson from the Explore the Bible curriculum is called Revealed. We're going to be in Luke 24, verses 18 through 31. I have my journal from Luke as we go through the gospel together. I have about five things I want to share with you about the passage uh, after the crucifixion where Jesus appears on the Emmaus Road. Before we begin, let me open us with a word of prayer. Father, as we study the scripture today, uh, may you reveal who Jesus is to us, just as you did to those who saw him alive and well after the resurrection. And may we proclaim him as the risen Lord and Savior of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing we want to look at in today's passage is that we all have questions about Jesus. Let's look at verses uh, 18 through 21 in chapter 24 of Luke. The one named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened here in these days? What things, he asked them. So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. Let's stop there. So we're going to look at disciples' questions here. These two disciples that Jesus meets on the road are looking for a Messiah who would redeem Israel by a political power, not a spiritual power. And that is why the events of Jesus' crucifixion are so devastating to them. Um, if Jesus was the one who was going to redeem Israel from Rome politically, why would he have died on a Roman cross? That suggests a defeat, and they were looking for something else. They essentially had low expectations of who the Messiah was. Jesus, though, had come to redeem them from a power much greater than political authority. Uh, and before they could understand this, they needed to be prepared. You see, these two disciples were expecting God to redeem Israel from their suffering rather than to redeem all of his people through his own suffering. They didn't understand that Jesus' kingdom was not going to come through conquest of Rome or political power, but was going to come through his own crucifixion. Also, they note that it's the third day since Jesus' death uh, that these things had happened. So they may have made some kind of connection to Jesus' teaching about being resurrected, but at this point, they are either not believing what had happened or they're just being impatient. The second thing we want to look at in today's passage is that we should search for answers to our questions about Jesus. Let's look at Luke 24, verses 22 to 24. So as Jesus is walking with them here, uh, they talk some more about what happened. Verse 22, Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb, and they found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. 
So the, the two disciples here are telling the experience of the women who had found the empty tomb first. And these two disciples, as they recant the story, are um, amazed by the news of the resurrection. And when they hear this story from the women, um, women's testimony were not really regarded as being credible. So some of them went to the tomb to see for themselves, and they reported that it was empty, just like the women had said. So these two disciples know this story. So there's a sense in this that all of us should try to go and see for ourselves, because if the resurrection did happen, then nothing else in our lives would matter more. We should look at scripture and see for ourselves what the truth is. In fact, the scripture does testify that Jesus was crucified for our sin and he rose again under his own power to redeem us from our sinfulness. The third thing we want to see here today is that Jesus reveals God's truth through scripture. Let's look at verses 25 to 27. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. So, Jesus asked the two disciples, why didn't they understand that it was necessary that Christ should suffer these things that had happened? Uh, his crucifixion was something that was necessary because Jesus didn't fit the model of what a Messiah was. He had to explain it to them. Uh, they couldn't accept that his crucifixion was necessary for him to have his kingdom come about. Uh, Jesus also goes further here. He wants them to actually know that suffering and death were necessary for him to enter into his glory. Now, Jesus's glory actually refers to his return to heaven, where he reigns with God the Father. Um, it also includes his second coming, when he will return in power and in glory. So, now Jesus walks these two disciples through the scriptures, and he showed how all of it actually points to him. When Luke says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he's basically using shorthand here to show the entire uh, testimony of the Old Testament is about Jesus. God reveals his truth through scripture on the basis of our belief. So the fulfillment of lots of prophecies, over 500 of them, thousands of years ago, point to the one um, undeniable truth. Jesus is that Messiah. The fourth thing we want to see today is that the more time you spend with Jesus, the clearer his truths become. Let's look at verses 28 and 29. They came near the village where they were going, and he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, stay with us, because it is almost evening, and now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. So as they arrive at their village, the two men urge Jesus to stay with them. Uh, their invitation involved accepting accommodations overnight, having a meal, and providing hospitality, uh, knowing that Jesus is by himself and seems to be going on. So they invite him to stay, have a meal, and they intend for him to stay overnight with it, wherever they are. And the urgency of their invitation shows that they're being more than just polite with Jewish hospitality from that culture. Jesus' explanation of the scriptures had moved them deeply, and I believe that they just wanted to hear more and spend more time with them. And this should be something that we should feel as well. As we study scripture and we spend time with Jesus, 
His truths become clearer, and the more time we spend with him, the more time we're going to want to spend with him, too. The final thing we want to see in today's passage is that we understand who Jesus is by spending time with him. Let's look at verses 30 and 31 to conclude. It was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from their sight. So this had occurred within a week of Passover, and Jesus is not necessarily reenacting the Lord's Supper here, although some scholars point out that there's similarity here with what he's doing as to what he did at the Last Supper as well. So these two disciples were probably not in the upper room uh, with the apostles, so they would not have known the symbolism yet unless the apostles had discussed it with the others. Uh, they may not have understood how the bread actually represented Jesus' body broken for them. So since Jesus disappeared from their sight and wasn't staying with them, these two men uh, urgently went back to find the eleven. And while they were there, Jesus appears in their midst and uh, reveals himself. That's found in Luke 24, verse 36. Now, at first, the other disciples thought that they were seeing a ghost, but these two saw and knew who Jesus was because he'd just been with them. Only when we sit with Jesus and experience his presence and have our eyes opened spiritually can we have a true understanding of who Jesus is. So I would encourage you to spend time in the Word of God and spend time with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me for today's life lesson as we continue through Luke. We will see you next time for the final life lesson in this journey together.